Hey folks, welcome to another Display Glasses AR video. Today, Xreal announced the One, Xreal One. It's powered by the X1 chip inside. And as you can see, I've got a, a shiny Xreal box right here in front of me that has an Xreal One inside it. And this is what the Xreal One looks like on my face. I've been testing this for about a week. It has electrochromic dimming, very similar to the Xreal Air 2 Pro and Xreal Air 2 Ultra. It does not have any type of tracking camera, so there's no way to get six degrees of freedom off of these. But what's really cool is when I get a little closer to the underside here, there's a little orange button that does some magic. Clicking on the orange button gets you into a menu structure that allows you to change things like the display. It has true three degrees of freedom directly built into the glasses. And it's working with pretty much any device that's got USB-C video connection. So if you've got display over USB-C, these have you covered. Otherwise, there's adapters and things of that nature to convert an HDMI connection to a USB-C connection for display. And there's adapters to power devices that require additional power for USB-C display. So I'm gonna just talk about the experience using these glasses. I've been beta testing them for about a week and it's a pretty remarkable device. The first thing I will mention, it is much thinner profile for the lenses assembly itself. The outer shell of these things is so tiny that I'm scared to really do much with. And there's this cover on the front. You can kind of see the lip here. I am scared to touch it, but it's actually removable and will eventually be customizable. So you can add some bling to your x ones and make them your own. The other thing I'll mention is the sound in these things is powered by Bose. Bose, of course, renowned for sound quality and it definitely shows in these glasses. Uh, the other arm just says x one in case you were wondering. And you've got a single USB-C connection right here. It is a very flexible arm, similar in a lot of ways to the x Air 2 series, but even a little softer uh, material than, than those were. And the inner assembly, you've got a similar birdbath display to the other glasses, but again, a little bit thinner. These are actually just slightly heavier than the Air 2s. And then directly in the middle right here is a little cap that's removable where you can add at a later date, an RGB camera accessory, essentially right in front of your nose here, right at that nose bridge area right there, there's gonna be a little RGB camera and there's a button on the top here that you can use as an accessory to trigger photos and videos with that little camera. I do wanna mention, you do have to connect this by USB-C. These are not powered by anything in the glasses themselves. Both the glasses and the X1 powered menu structure are entirely powered by the device that you plug into. So the x One do require an all-in-two style setup where you're plugging into another device both for signal, for content, as well as for power. Now in the event that you're using something like the Nintendo Switch, you might need something like this, the x Hub, which is an accessory here that allows you to connect the glasses on one side and power on the other side. Uh, and then that way you're powering the Switch getting the correct signal, and then also powering the glasses. So what does the X1 chip inside these things actually do? Well, I've been able to experience having a anchored mode where you've got a screen in front of you that you can adjust and resize. I believe my optimal size is around 147 inch simulated screen from about five meters distance. But you can make it up to as large as a ultra wide screen 224 inch monitor where you have to actually turn your head from side to side to see it just like you would with a giant ultra wide monitor taking up space in your room. I've used ultra wide, I've used standard, I've used 3D, all of that's controllable from within the glasses. So with the anchor mode you've got it right in front of your face but when you turn your face that screen is locked in position. There's also a follow mode where when you move, the screen moves with you. 
And there's also a side view mode where it puts the screen in the top corner of either eye. And you can set that to either the right or left eye, whichever is more comfortable for you. So maybe you're talking to someone, you want to see a little picture of them in a video call while you're doing other things, or you've got a YouTube video that you don't really need to pay attention to the video content, but you're just jamming along to. You can put that just in the upper corner of your vision and do other things and have free reign to see around you. Uh, they are slightly tinted, so everything is almost like wearing a good pair of sunglasses, and that's when you have no electrochromic dimming. In addition to using the orange button for adjusting the different settings for the mode switching, you can also hold this brightness button down and it'll switch the electrochromic dimming setting. And it's three steps here. So we're on the lightest setting where I can see everything right now. This is the second step. And then this is the darkest step. This mode, this lightest mode, is fantastic for when you're in a situation where you want to see the world around you, but you also want to consume content. The screen clarity is fantastic in these things. Text is very sharp. Everything looks really good in the glasses. So to get to the menu structure on the glasses, there's a little orange button. You click it twice and there's options for display. Changing the screen size from as small as 117 inches from a distance of four meters away to 477 inches from a distance of 10 meters away. There's also the ability to enable ultra wide mode, which gives you a essentially 32 by nine screen that allows you to pan all the way from the left to the right and back. Then you've also got a 3D mode that sets it to side by side 3D. A stabilizer mode, which is what kind of locks it in place for the anchor and follow modes. If you turn that off, it gives you zero degrees of freedom. So just a giant screen in front of your face. A brightness enhancement that allows you to make the screen even brighter when you're in the zero doff mode with the stabilizer turned off. I think that's because the glasses consume more power with the stabilizer on, so turning it off gives you a little bit more of a boost to brighten the lenses. And then you've got side view. Again, side view is positionable on either the right side corner, top corner, or the left side top corner. There's a display optimization that turns on and off. Uh, color temperature is able to be adjusted directly in the glasses and you can make it softer or warmer to your heart's content. There's an auto sleep button that you can set anywhere from 30 seconds to never. Uh, 30 seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour or never. And then something that is brand new to these glasses is a software-based IPD adjustment. So people have had blurry edges or parts of the screen that have been cut off and it's not the fault or a flaw in the manufacturing of the previous X-Real series of glasses. It's just the fact that the person who's wearing them has an inner pupillary distance that isn't really compatible with the set fixed distance in the glasses. So in these, you can actually set to your IPD. So the second section is sound, which lets you set volume and also lets you set one of two audio protocols. One is called UAC, which is the standard protocol that you would usually have set. But if that doesn't work, you can switch to DP mode or display port output mode. And that is basically allowing you to use the signal that you would use with an HDMI powered device or a device that doesn't support UAC. There's a shortcut button on the top here. When you click on that button, you can switch that to turn on transparency mode, turn on ultra wide mode, 3D mode, switch the audio protocol or turn on each stage of the electrochromic dimming. And then finally, in the other setting, you've got the ability to play through the tutorial that you get when you first start up the glasses, which walks you through how to use this menu structure and the different button combinations. A sensor calibration suite, which I do encourage when you get these that you run at least once. Changing your language settings. Mine are, of course, currently set to English and then resetting to factory settings. At this point, there's also a section on regulatory information tells you about all the different certifications they've gotten with the Xreal One. A listing of the version number of the Xreal software that's running on the glasses and a serial number. If you click on that version number, it also gives you the details on going out to upgrade the firmware on the glasses. I've actually got an upgrade of the firmware myself using their over-the-air solution. 
you plug in the glasses to your PC, go to a website, and then you can run the over-the-air update through the website for that. So those are all features that are built into the glasses. Let me tell you a little bit about what I've been mostly doing with these. I love watching movies on these things. I've pulled up Tubi, which is a free application that's available on Android or PC, and I've watched a bunch of movies in that ultra widescreen format, but kind of formatted just as a giant screen in front of me. So it feels like a very cinematic experience. It feels better to me than when I was watching movies in clips when I did my demo of the Apple Vision Pro. I really appreciate the fact that the folks at Xreal pulled in all of these different formats directly into the glasses because it means that any device that I have that plugs into these glasses that actually supports the display over USB-C, I can use all of those different modes with. I've watched a little bit of 3D content, but primarily I've done a lot of gaming. I've got a Retroid Pocket Mini here, which on the bottom you can just plug into the USB-C port. I've played giant widescreen Crazy Taxi. I've played a giant screen version of Mario 64. I've had a lot of fun playing using the Retroid Mini, but I've also found the best way for me, at least, to play Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. It's a game that I've been exploring both just on a flat screen and in virtual reality. And the drawback for me with playing in virtual reality was using the Quest 3 or Quest 3S, it feels like the picture kind of degrades. It goes to like a lower setting. Whereas if I plug in the Xreal One and I set it to a 3840 by 1080 display, I've got a giant wide screen in front of me in ultra wide mode. And I can turn my head and it feels like I'm actually in the cockpit of a plane, turning my head from side to side and looking and seeing the world around me. Now, the clip I'm gonna show you is kind of a rough quality because I filmed through the lenses with a camera that's kind of pixelated, but you'll see me overlooking Paris at night in the cabin of an aircraft, and it's, it's amazing. It really, truly is. It's the way I want to play this game, and I can see why flight sim enthusiasts have bought those giant three or four monitor setups to surround them in their cockpits. Uh, I don't need to do that anymore because I've got glasses that allow that ultra wide format, which is awesome. And then of course I can do conference calls. I can do just about anything with these. I've got microphones and speakers built in. The best quality audio I've had in a pair of display glasses thus far, again, powered by Bose, fantastic quality glasses. So if you're looking for a pair of display glasses with the most compatibility, Again, having that X1 chip inside, you've got all of those different display modes available. You've got the IPD adjustment inside and you've got different sound options to make it basically compatible with anything you can plug that USB-C into and get a display out from. I will note during beta testing, we've had some challenges with the audio modes. When you switch the audio modes, sometimes the audio gets a little weird. It's almost like it's breaking up, like if you're on a telephone conversation, you go through a tunnel and you've got that signal degradation. It almost feels like that. But I hope that that's resolved by the time these ship to consumers. Again, that's part of what happens when you're doing beta testing is you find these bugs and then the engineers work to work those out. If you already got a pair of Xreal glasses or Vitra glasses or Rocket glasses and you're happy with those and you're happy with the comfort and you're happy with the situation that you have right now, you probably don't need to invest in these. Um, but if you've got a pair of glasses and you want higher quality and you want to have all of those modes available or your device just doesn't really work really well with them, these are really awesome because they've got all of that extra capability built into them. This is just my initial thoughts with the glasses. I've only had them for about a week, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. If you have questions about the Xreal One, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will go through, review those comments and either respond directly in the comments, make another short video that just kind of describes the answer to your question go back to the team if I don't know the answer and see if I can get a response for you or a combination of the three. Depends on the questions that are being asked. If you want more information about the Xreal One, go out to xreal.com. 
or go to their Reddit community at reddit.com slash r slash xreal to get more details and more conversation about the xreal one. I'll be back with more content soon. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR, AR, XR, or just watch some cool content on your glasses. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.